privilege uh, to not, again, speak by myself, but to have uh, my lovely wife up here with me. So if you don't mind coming up here now, I'm going to introduce the others as well. But first, I want to introduce my wife. Um, as you all know, Rebecca Lynn Thayel. No, I didn't need that. Um, yeah, just give her, let's give it, yeah, let's give it up. Um, so today is family discussions. If you were, uh, got one of the little flyers or been watching on the screens, uh, family discussions is what we're going to be talking about. We did this two years ago. I don't know who, who was here last time we did family discussions. Okay, we got a few good, a few people that weren't here. Um, but last time we just kind of got up here and started talking about uh, some topics and went through some questions and uh, just discussed some things as, as families. And so I have two other families that I'm going to have up here with me, to, with me and Becky up here as well. Uh, but before I want to get started, I do have a special guest that's here today. Um, he, he looks exactly like me, not really, but he, he tried to look exactly like me today, and I wanted to pinpoint him out. If you didn't see him yet, if you don't mind standing for me, Jordan, where you at? Yeah, come, come out into the light a little bit, man, you're a little dark. Come out into the light a little bit. I want, I want people to see. Come on, run down here, man. Get, get more in the light. Yeah, yeah, come on, let's give him, pre- yeah. So I'm putting you on the spot because I'm actually going to have you take my place today. Uh, <laughs> You wanted to dress like me, so maybe I get him to do the discussions for me. Thank you, sir. But uh, I thought he—I thought he did a pretty good job. He, he got the same shirt, you know, and uh, rolled up his pants, you know. He, you know, slicked his his hair back. Poo! Looking good this morning. Um, yeah, he can't—he can't match this though, so it's all good. Um, anyway. So uh, just to give you guys, so Brandy and Mike is going to be up here with us. If y'all are here, you can make your way up as well. Um, And then Lance and Pam is also going to be with us today, but Pam is not able to make it. Uh, The kids are not feeling well today. So Lance is going to have to sit there by himself um, and feel uncomfortable, but we're going to try to make him comfortable today. Uh, So let's welcome them up real quick, if you don't mind. We sat down uh, at Brandy and Mike's house. Uh, Tuesday, uh, Tuesday night, uh, or Thursday night maybe, and uh, we were just kind of going through the discussion questions that we're going to talk about today, and uh, we talked for two hours, so you may get two hours out of us today. No, I'm just joking. Uh, we know we know we are ready to go outside and have fun, and the kids are with you, and they're going to be a uh, bear. So we're going to get through these questions, not necessarily quickly, but uh, just not without foundation, I guess is what I'm saying. We're going to talk about each question, but we're going to talk foundationally about what God has done in our life and what God is going to continue to do. And hopefully um, what you hear today um, will be uh, inspirational for you and your family and what um, you want God to do there. And I don't know, again, I remember the discussions. I, I looked, I, read, I went actually watch it back uh, just to kind of see kind of what we talked about. And uh, man, boy, was I one nervous wreck up here uh, when we did the discussions. And, uh, but I, I know that we've become family since then. And so I'm excited about hearing not just from myself, but from my wife and from these two families today, because Lance is going to represent his wife up here. Um, and they talked about it and had good discussions since we just talked. So I know he's going to bring his wife into the mix as well. Uh, but uh, just open your hearts, prepare yourself to hear from, from the Lord on your behalf. Every family is different. We understand that. We're, we're not all the same, uh, but we do go through the same hardships that you guys do. You know, we have Lance Castro and Brandy Tebow that are worship leaders up here every single Sunday. Mike's, again, doing Rangers, in Rangers, been involved for, for many years and faithfully there and committed in leaders in this church. And sometimes you guys can look at those, in, those positions and say, well, we're perfect people and we don't make mistakes and we run our families perfectly. That's not the case. Um, and so we want to make sure that that's, that's known right off the bat. We've been, been pretty open through this whole family conference with you guys that we're not perfect. We make mistakes. We get in fights. Um, and, and we have to battle through just like you guys. But we're going to do our best to give foundational principles of how it applies to the Lord in all this. Not just the rough times, but that there's always a way out. Amen? It's not just a, a destruction perspective, but God has a way always through. And so the first thing we wanted to open with today was just a fun family moment. Get you guys kind of involved in our family a little bit about something that we uh, personally have gone through. Are, are you guys ready with y'all's family fun, fun story? I'm going to let you guys go first, and then we'll, we'll go around. It should be on. Yep. Just hold. Make sure it's green. Okay. Hello. Can you hear me? Okay. There we go. All right. Good. Uh, so, I mean, I told, I'm, I'm going I'm to tell on myself this morning. 
But uh, Brandy had told me, well, why are you, you going to make a fool out of yourself? Because I, I like to. I don't know. So uh, I was thinking about a family moment. I couldn't really pinpoint a family moment, but <clears throat> I started thinking of a moment where, like, uh, our whole family, not just our immediate family, but our whole family just had a good time and laughed. Mm -hmm. So as, as my whole family knows, and maybe some of everybody here, I hate cold water. I really hate cold water, especially getting into it. Like a pool? Like a pool. Thank you very much. So I was thinking back of our trip to Branson, and the kids could account for this. This is a very good moment. So we get to the pool, and it was supposed to be uh, climate control, which it wasn't. So it was very cold, and they were all in. I don't know how they did it. But I started getting in slow. Well, I didn't get slow. I jumped in, right? Yeah. yeah. I jumped in. So we, when I jumped we were in, probably egging yeah, him on, you know. yeah, yeah the whole time, just cheering me on and everything. And I was fighting it, but I finally jumped in. And when I jumped in, the next thing I remember is a bright light. <laughs> <laughs> and the sound of angels' voices. <laughs> and when I finally come out of the water screaming, <laughs> I realized it wasn't a bright light. <laughs> and it wasn't angels' voices. It was my family laughing at me. <laughs> so... Yeah, that, and to this day, uh, I will always have trouble getting in cold water. It will take me a while. You just got to <laughs> let me be, and I'll finally get there. But that's a funny moment telling on myself, so yeah. that's what I wanted to share. Yeah, the whole family did enjoy that moment. Yeah. Check, yeah. we're here. Um, so a snapshot into uh, my family. Um, we would spontaneously do random trips um, not necessarily vacations, but just random trips um, with the culprits, Bryce and Michelle Quibido. Um They were always getting us into these situations, but one of them, the, the most recent, was um, probably the most memorable, was um, just going to Oklahoma to cut a tree. <laughs> it was a, a tree he found, sinker cypress log. We went out there, it spurred him, John Connell, like the drop of a hat, went out there <clears throat> to to mill this log in the middle of nowhere. Literally, it was just like out in the, the most remote part of Oklahoma. And, um, and, and this was actually Pam. So I'm bringing you some, some of Pam's perspective as well, okay? So it's not just me, but um, it stood out to her. So th there was this place called Broken Bow Lake. And we, we, I said, well, let's just do it. Because when we go on these trips, we just, I say, let's go find something that is really, you know, off the path and, and just something that we can experience. So we found this, this road, and it took us to Broken Bow Lake. And um, there was this embankment. You had to go down this, this trail. I don't know how many people actually went down that trail off that often, but we went down there. It was just an embankment of rocks and um, different types of, of rocks uh, to make it interesting. And so, um, but we just sat there literally for hours stacking rocks on the water's edge. And my kids enjoyed it. They loved it. And, uh, and we just enjoyed sitting there. Just, we would laugh and, and we would do different things because uh, around my kids at all, they're always drawing or designing or creating some kind of something. Um, it's probably going to be an animation movie, um, <laughs> something from, from Disney or whatever, any type of an animation. But, so they were, they were creating these little, you know, these little structures and, and, um, and objects. And, but, but just a snapshot is we would, that's what we do. We, we just do something that probably normal people don't do. And um, I don't know many people that would do something, you know, just drive, just the drop of a hat, just go out to Oklahoma, drive all these hours, and, and, and go hang out by some water. So anyway. No, that's good. That's good. Um, our family fun moment, it was kind of, a, uh, we went through like four of them, and we were like, man, these are great, but uh, we kind of ended on this one specific one that uh, it was when we had Benjamin. Um, so we, Christmas, we, we found out that we were having Benjamin November, maybe close, close to the end of November or third, it was 30 days or more plus before Christmas. And so we had to hold this in, uh, for 30 days because we, we had a plan in mind, um, with our kids and how to tell them we were going to be having a baby. And so Christmas morning, they get up, they open all their gifts, you know, everything goes through. And then they had one, we had a scavenger hunt planned. So our plan was, we're going to send our kids out on Christmas morning, running around the yard, because we had planted uh, all these different little letters that told them where to go next. 
And so they started, man, they went up these different things, mailbox, went around, went up a ladder, came to the fire pit, came around under this little canopy tent thing we had created. And, uh, and so they went through all that process. And they were running around, you know, I was able to film them and watch them just run around the whole yard. And they got back into the house because the last thing said, you'll find the gift under the tree. And their expectations like, man, we're about to get this big, you know, three-person gift, you know. And so they run inside and they get to the tree and it's just this little bitty box, you know, I'd say about yay high, you know, about this wide. And they rip it open and it's an empty baby box. So like, like if you had a baby, uh, a baby doll, there we go, baby doll in there. Well, we took the baby doll out or it was the baby doll we had given somebody or whatever. And so we just had the box. So we wrapped the box up and they opened it up and they're like, Oh man, what, what is this? You know, they're confused as to why in the world this box number one is empty. And number two, why in the world is it just one baby doll box? That doesn't make sense. So we had to kind of uh, ask the question, well, what do you, what do you, what should you be asking in this moment? You know, I, my expectation was they were going to, they were going to ask this question. That's why we thought of this plan. And uh, so they, they opened it up and said, what question, where's the baby? And then we had what well, mama was able to ultimately hold her belly and say, here's the baby. And they at first kind of like were shocked, but then they blew up and got crazy and were, were happy and laughing and all over. And the, 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 the gift they thought they were getting was more important when they, when they found out they were going to have a baby at that point. And so we enjoyed that moment with our kids. And we actually, play, you want to tell them the rest of it? So you can. Um, well, we just wanted to come and show our parents that was our family, it was the next thing because they knew that we were struggling to conceive at that time. And so they were along with us on that journey. But um, we did uh, How High Can You Count? So we didn't really tell the kids and we didn't have time to like practice anything. So we literally were driving down Pumping Plant Road and Chris is like, where can we stop? So we see the gravel road with the, um, you know, where the big trucks come in. So we pull over, we get out of the car on Christmas day and we're practicing. How do we run up? How do we do this? How, would, how do we even get them outside? They're not going to know what's going and that's on. That's the perfection in nature in me. I'm like, we got to practice to make sure it's yeah. right. You know? Yeah, that's true. And so we showed up and then, you know, they all bounced out from behind a different tree and was like, how high can you count? Number four was coming. But yeah, yeah. it was, it was a good moment because it was unexpected. You know, those unexpected moments, just like, finding some random place to be or Mike jumping in. You know, you're not expecting these things. Those are the best moments. So. Yeah. And then, we, then the Christmas uh, day that evening, we were able to go and, and show, do the same thing to my parents. Walked in one, two, three, four, and then Becky came in with the, with the four on her, on her belly. So it was just, we had never done it before, and so it was a great experience. Uh, not only just planning it for us, for our kids, but then getting our kids involved in the planning process of going tell the grandparents. And so that's, that's why we brought that story up, because it was just, it was cute key in our, our process and, and Benjamin and just like she said, the mentioning of the process of the battle that we were facing as a family and to be able to rejoice together as a family in that moment was, was awesome and, and, our, and our families were able to join in with us in that as well. Um, so that, that's a little insight into us. I mean, obviously we could go on for days about the family stories in our, in our lives. Uh, but we wanted to pick out one just to kind of give you a personal experience into our life, what we actually do, what we experience and how, how we go about, uh, in, in implementing our family involved in that. Cause family on vacations, family on trips is what it's about. I mean, Lance and Pam could choose to go by themselves. You know what I'm saying? They could bring the kids to the grandparents' house and say, well, we're going to go on a spontaneous trip by ourselves. Themselves. But no, they're adamant about bringing their kids with them everywhere they go so that they can experience the same things that their family is experiencing. And I, I've learned, I've seen that, and it's been kind of a challenge in my life to do the same thing, to say, look, I want to bring my kids and involve them in what we're doing so that they can experience life with us, not apart from us. Because sometimes that's so easy for us as, as, as parents. We need to get away. I said that a few, a few weeks ago. You know, our, me and my wife need to get away. But a lot of the times, most of the percentage of time, we need to include our family in what we're doing because they need to experience life with us. And that's including us in ministry. That's something God's been, been speaking to us about as well, that we're not doing this apart from them, but with them. Amen. Question two, we're going to talk a little bit about parenting, uh, 
today. We, we, we talked about marriage. We talked about fathering. We talked about, um, you know, faithfulness and church at home. And now we just want to kind of bring it back to some basic understanding for the parents that are in the room, the grandparents in the room, the same thing applies. We're, we're, we, we're all leading these kids in a certain direction. And so parenting needs to be something we talk about this morning, just to give insight into our parenting, you know, the ups and downs that we've gone through, uh, but the positives in that as well. And, and, and I want to just start out by saying we are no longer leading our kids. We are walking alongside them. So I brought this up because I feel like we as parents have a choice to make. We can either be friends with our kids, best friends with our kids, or we can be the authority in their life and parent our kids. That's the two choices we have every single day. And we're going to either choose to walk alongside them or choose to walk in front of them and and, and lead them where we're trying to go. And that's what God's calling us as parents to do. We've done that from the beginning because I know the responsibility that God has given me as a parent to lead my kids into the presence of God, like we talked about at home, into learning how to pray, how to read the word, and, and ultimately pair them in that relationship with the father when they get old enough to make that decision. That's my job. I'm the middle. We are the middle people in between the relationship between the father and them until they become of age to take on that responsibility. Responsibility, And so I, I want to be friends to my kids. I mean, we're going to have fun. We're going to clown around. But that is not my role in their life. My role in their life is to be a parent, instruct them, discipline them, and lead them and equip them in what God has for their life. And if I'm not doing that, I'm failing as a parent. And so we need to be able to understand that's our responsibility. And if we don't, then, then, then we're losing and we're, we're going in the opposite direction because our kids are, are going to follow somebody at some point because there is human nature to follow. I'm sorry, we can be great leaders, but we all are following somebody at some point in our life. And they're either choosing to follow you as their parent or they're choosing to follow somebody else, teacher, you know, political, whatever it is may be in their life, somebody that number one probably isn't serving God and is going to lead them down the road of destruction. So why not, why not step into that role, the role that God has given you and the responsibility in leading your children? Um, I felt like the Holy Spirit was talking to me um, earlier today, and I was thinking about Christians who raise their children and then their children walk away. And I just felt the Holy Spirit saying, Um, when you have a tree, right, the branches grow out of the tree and people say, oh, well, those were such godly people. And how could this happen to their kids? And, and I feel like the Holy Spirit was saying there was something else that broke the order. So what, what that means to me is, is you have parents, but then parents can make choices, obviously, or things happen in life where the order gets a little messed up and the children shift their focus from mom and dad to something outside the home. Sometimes that's, um, you know, they're not getting what they need from parents. Maybe they're not getting the attention. They don't feel like you have that focus on them. So they find someone who gives them that focus. Does that make sense? Like, Right, we talk about kids getting involved in gangs and getting involved in different things. It's because someone is giving them that attention that they are craving. And so I I just wanted to caution you parents um, to pay attention to that. You know, see, is there something that's out of order in I am the parent, the connection between you and your child? Be cautious of that, that there's no one else interfering with that. Um, what, what I would, I would talk about discipline, disciplining their children. Um, there's always been something that was very important to me. I I was brought up by, um, older, older generation, right? And, um, so when I, growing up, my parents did not move anything in the house. Um, if you went to reach for something, no, you got your hands, you know, spanked. So that, that was the environment in which I grew up in. So when, when going in the marriage and having our first child, I, it was very important for me to, in, to instill that. Um, but I also understood that, like, from zero to probably around age eight, if I wasn't consistent in that age, in that age frame, um, time frame, um, my success rate 
after that age reduced significantly. Um, so I, I did a lot of work up front instilling the discipline um, and studying each child because each child was different. They had their own personalities. And so my, my daughter, I could just kind of, you know, give, maybe give some eyes or change the tone of my voice and she would comply. My Ethan, he was a little bit, he, he, she kind of kept him in line, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> and, uh, and then when Bennett came along, my, my mom said, well, my goodness, he was, he's worse than you. <laughs> and so um, just a, a, quick, a quick story on, on Bennett, but um, he was probably around three years old, emptied some cat food. I said, no, dude, you're picking cat food up. I'm not sweeping this, and my wife's not going to sweep this up. And literally, I probably spanked for 30 30 to 45 minutes with him. I just, I said, he's crying and snotting everywhere. But I said, you, you're not, I, you're not, you're not winning this battle. Right. And, and, um, and, and that was, it. I said, listen, I will help you pick the cat food up, but you're going to have to start it. You're going to have to initiate it and I will help you. And I never got angry. I, you know what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't get upset, but I said, you're not winning the battle. And, uh, and finally he, he finally broke. And I said, well, that's where it's at. But consistency is the key with, with discipline and starting at an early age. Um, you know, and so just, just, just if that's the takeaway, just being consistent with that, studying each child um, and, and realizing their personality differences. And so you don't have to be so forceful with some where the other ones you may have to, you know. So anyway. I just wanted to say from... A standpoint of like I was raised by awesome parents y'all know my awesome parents right y'all all y'all all feel that in your lives but like you can know good things to do and you can know the good Christian things to do and still not always implement them well so for years I got I didn't realize it at the time just into a survival mode as a mom I had three babies back to back and like stuff just was overwhelming. And you can be busy about trying to be good and doing the Lord's work. I worked at here for, here for 11 years. I was in ministries all over the place and God had to get my attention to change and surrender. And in the midst of all that, all the excuses for why I was parenting like I did, all the excuses for why discipline was lax or, or, or inconsistent and all of these different things, they didn't change until I ran to my father, God. And I'm just being honest. All the parenting advice that we can give you will still frustrate you if you are not running to the presence of God and letting him teach you and being willing to not be right anymore. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, God, just show me. I'm okay with you telling me I'm wrong. Like that is like a courageous prayer to pray. And that is how God changed my prayer life. God, I just need you to show me and speak to me. And then he started changing all of my focus in parenting because it can, it can, we can be selfish parents. And we just get into a place where I'm just doing this to, to make it through today. And it's a trap. And like we have to realize we're in that trap and that we want more for our family. We want to give them a heart filled up with God's love because we went to his presence and let him teach us and get all the gunk out the way so that we can be a funnel into our children's lives. And so as far as with discipline, discipline completely changed whenever my ears are completely open to the Lord. In the midst of my, you know, you got kids coming up and this one said this and this one said this and I straight up, I have to depend on the Holy Spirit. And so many times he's like, he's lying. <clears throat> and I'm like, okay, God. And I just start questioning down that path of where God is leading me. And he finds the situation. I don't think parenting was ever supposed to be without the leading of the Holy Spirit. I don't think marriage was supposed to be. None of this life was supposed to be without the leading of the Holy Spirit. And so I, I just want to throw that out there that like it won't be super successful until you choose to lay aside all of yourself and run to God's presence and let him speak over you. So I just wanted to say that.
which is a statement. I, like, I want to state, state this statement because I believe it's critical. It's something that God gave me, and I want to make sure that I say it today as well. But it's overcoming conflict in the natural versus the supernatural. And I love that uh, Brandy brought that up just now because this is a very real thing. You know, for us as parents in the room, um, we are either going to choose to resolve and overcome conflict in the natural yeah. or the supernatural. We have a choice to make every single time our child acts up. There, and this goes, it doesn't matter how old they are. It's all the way up to 17, 18 years old. You have a choice to make to say, I'm going to resolve this conflict in the heavenlies, or I'm going to resolve the conflict by having a shouting match or, or, or a conversation match. And a lot of the times as parents, we use this because I said so mentality, and we never train our kids and give our kids anything. And so we need to understand that when these, when these conflicts come up, it's because God's trying to bring something to the surface. Yeah. When you're a spiritual family, a family that's following after God, he's now the head of your household, not the tail, you know? So you're, you're being led by him into these circumstances. And just like in our own personal life, when he brings up things in our life, it's, it's for our good because he's trying to show us something, how to change something. The same thing happens with our children. Yeah. God is trying to bring up something in them that we need to resolve. And the only way we're going to resolve it is in the spiritual. And so the decision we have to make as parents is to say, God, I'm going to step away from the situation. Hey, go to your room. You know, that's, that's an easy one, right? We can send them to the room. We can go in our prayer closet and say, God, I need your wisdom right now in this moment. But a lot of the times, look, I, I'm, I'm at fault with it. My first reaction is going to be, I want to resolve it now. So there's a problem. What's the problem? Let's get through it now. No, I need to stop sometimes and say, hey, now if it's, if it's obvious, uh, d- discipline's coming automatically. I don't need the Holy Spirit in that moment to know whether or not it's right or wrong, right? But, but, but if, we don't, if we don't allow ourselves to be checked to say, God, I need, to, I need to hear from you on behalf of my child right now. And so we need to, as parents, put ourselves in position, put ourselves before God and say, God, show me what's wrong with my child. And that when that child is angry and that child is, is talking back, if that child is not listening to you, there's a deeper rooted issue. Yeah. And if we don't go before the father and find it, you're not going to resolve the issue by just spanking them. You're not going to resolve the issue by taking away their device. I'm sorry, we, re- we, re- we reverted to, you know, I'm going to take away their devices. Well, that's not really harming most of them. You know, I know that devices are a big thing in, in the kids' world, but again, that's not discipline, guys. They need to know what's going on in their life and how to change it. That's the same thing God works with us. If I sin in my life or I'm doing something wrong, I need to know how to change it, not just stop it. So we need to be more vulnerable in our parenting tactics to say, God, I want to hear from you on behalf of my child so that they can grow in the way that they should go so that they will not depart from him. That word comes to life when we do our job spiritually as parents to bring God into those conflicts so that he can be glorified in the midst of it. And then they grow. So we need to make that a point because I know, Brandy, you've, you've had some moments in your life where the supernatural was part of, of a decision you had to make on your kids' behalf. I know that we've been in the same situation. Prayer, dream, whatever it is, God can speak to you as a parent on behalf of your children if you open yourself up to them. So I challenge you to, to do that. I want to make sure I said that if I said anything, that was one thing I wanted to say for sure. Yeah. Like, how do we expect our children to be vulnerable with us as parents if we won't go and be vulnerable with God? Like, as the leader, like, if we have to lead by example. If we're not going to him with the same level of surrender that we want our children to have in following us, like, it's already, you're already messed up. Like, it's going to be so frustrating if you want them to be more of a Christian than you are, you know? So... I've, I've always been one to, um, especially early on in the marriage, you know, uh, operating in the natural as far as disciplining and stuff like that. And um, like Lance said, every child is different. Um, and that's very evident in ours. Uh, <laughs> some are a little tougher to get to than others. But um, I would say sometimes kids are, you know, are definitely a mystery. And uh, sometimes when it comes to trying to figure out how to communicate with them, um, they can be almost like a calculus equation. Uh, and it's very hard to figure out. Um, you don't know the answer. 
But if you go to God and you pray for him to show you how to communicate with that kid, that calculus equation quickly turns into a one plus one, yeah. uh, which is you and you and him. Yeah. Um, and then he can reveal to you how to effectively communicate to that, to that, to that kid. Um, I, wish I, had the, I wish I had the ability to just whistle like Lance, but uh, <laughs> uh, I've never seen anybody just whistle when their kids come from two miles away. Um, <laughs> Kind of reminds me of that Pikmin game. I know the kids know Pikmin, you know, they whistles and all the people can follow them, you know. And it's pretty impressive, man. Um, discussing with Pam, she, she brought up a story um, last night. Oh, I say a story. She brought up a, 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 an occasion or situation where um, my, my two boys, they're, they're 15 and 10, and, and um, you know, we're, we homeschool our children. And so they're always, we're always together. I mean, we do everything together, so sometimes it gets a little agitating, you know what I'm saying, if you're around someone that much. So the, the two boys were, they were going at it about something. <clears throat> and yes, even with discipline, they, they still get out of control. But um, So they were going at it, and I wasn't home, but my wife said that she, had, she remembered a scripture that you had brought maybe Wednesday night, you had brought out, and... Uh, and so she said, well, you know what? She said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some time, and I'm just going to get along. So she went, and she's like, y'all need to stop, okay? And then she broke off, and she, she said, God, what, what do you want me to do here? <laughs> and I'm the disciplinary in the family. My wife, she, she will, but it has to, I, I always tell her, like, you talk too much. You know what I mean? Like, you, you just, you. <laughs> And instead of three, it's like 12, you know? So I'm like, you, you, just, you just talk way too much. I'm, I'm bam, I'm going to stop it right there. So she says, okay. So she goes, she gets away, goes in a room by herself. She, she, she reads the scripture, and she prays. And she says, God, what, what do you want me to? And she said, you know, Lance, she said, God gave me an answer for both boys, to something to address for both boys. And I was like, well, my goodness, that's, that's monumental for my wife. You know what I'm saying? And so just know that if you do walk in that direction, God will, he will respond. Amen. You have to go with expectation, though. Um, I mean, that's just a scriptural principle that applies in every, every facet of your life. So you go there with that expectation that God will give you something, um, and he, he will come through. All right, so switching from children to um, your spouse relationship. Um, Chris and I have been married for 16 years. No, nope, that's wrong. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> he's been waiting for probably three days he's been planning that, I guarantee you. He doesn't get me often, so he's been waiting for that moment. Um, <clears throat> uh, speaking of moments, so we were sitting at... Um, at Pedro's yesterday, Chris took me there because if you don't know, I love chips and salsa. I feel like it's maybe there's a lack in my body physically that something is just, I need that to survive. But um, we're sitting at the table and uh, the kids were cutting up. And you know when it's just a good day and you're like, everybody's happy. You had coffee. Everybody, you know, it, it, the kids are all sitting at the table behaving. Benjamin was sleeping in the stroller. You know, it was like a, a really good moment, and I was just feeling it. And uh, we were packing up the food, and there was just a piece of rice. That's all I saw on the fork. And so I was like, yeah. So I grabbed the fork, and I flung it at Chris's face. And I, no lie, I didn't see any other food on it, but this piece of zucchini just <laughs> sticks to his forehead, and I lose it. The kids are embarrassed. They're like, my gosh, we can't take mom out in public, you know. But um, it was fun for me uh, and the waitress who walked up on that moment. But um, So we've been married for 16 years. How do you remain faithful? Um, Chris, really, we talked about it in Covenant. Um, it's not a promise I made to just him. It's a promise I made to my God. Let me explain this to you. If you don't take your word to your God seriously, that's where it starts. We have to take our word seriously. When you're praying, like I don't teach my kids, say, and God protect us, you know, and build a hedge, and don't walk in that. 
I expect them to pray God protect us and then walk knowing that you are protected. Their words to their God are important. And if you can sit here and say, well, I mean, I know I made that covenant before God, but I didn't really know what I was doing. That doesn't matter. If you say something to God, you better be prepared to back it up. And so in our relationship, I took that very seriously. We are not perfect. We have improved greatly. If you know us. We have improved. They're, they're, they can laugh because they see us at home, you know. But we have improved greatly. I, I remember this one time mom was having cell group at the house. Chris and I were recording, and he ticked me off just a little too far. And so I punched his car. It was a Dodge. It was not really important. But, <clears throat> but it was important to him for some reason Um, I'm going to blame that on Marty. I don't know if he's in here, but he raised him that way. But anyway, it was, his car was extremely important to him. And so I was going to hit him where it hurt, you know, for that moment, it was the car anyways. So the point being is that was years ago, right? Now I hit him instead because that, because that hurts worse. But I honor my husband because God said so. The word of God, it's, it's communication right back and forth. I'm honoring the words that I made, the covenant I made with my God, and he honors his word, but I'm going to honor it as well. If he says, submit yourselves to your husbands, ladies, that's what we should do. And if you think, well, I don't really think that's what God meant, well, that's your problem. That's, that's where the order is out in, in between your marriage. If the Bible says listen carefully, spare the rod, hate the child. If God thought that was important enough to say, guess what? It's important enough to follow. And God will honor those things. I have met kids whose parents don't use the rod. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Y'all know somebody. Honor your words to your God and honor his words as well. We've, uh, we've been married 20 years now. I know Lance has been married longer than us, just by a little. Still my story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been married for 20 years now. Uh, we have four awesome kids. But um, we grew up, my parents got saved when I was 10. So we grew up in church and, and hearing of, you know, and watching marriages and this and that. But we have a certain understanding that we go into marriage with, and then you get married. And then, you know, whatever illusions you built, even though you thought they were Christian foundations, they can still just be illusions of what you thought marriage is supposed to be like. And um, so there was always, I was frustrated with different things. And I went to a a pastor's conference with dad once, and they broke off and had a a wives thing. And Sister Melanie Stockstill, um, someone was like, what? what about whenever you don't feel like your husband's hearing from God or something like that? And so she just was like, no. She's like, this is what submission means. And she said, to be in submission to your husband means your mission comes under his mission. And like, she was just like, just the simplicity of that. And she's like, that's really just all there is to it. Everything about you was made for your husband's mission to be completed. And in that moment, I I just started praying because God started convicting me for how I was praying for my husband. And I got mad at the devil for um, robbing my husband. And for all the, I just started warring for my husband differently. And that role in that, because I, I am a much bolder speaker. Mike is, Mike, is, Mike is so much quieter and more laid back. And I'm like, no, we're going to attack the issue. It is an issue. It must be dealt with, you know. And so our personalities are so different. And I, God had to convict me to recognize strength. And God had to convict me to see that submission differently and to war for my husband because, you know, that's my place. Every gifting, every talent I have is just made for his mission. 
You know what I'm saying? And like, that blew my mind. And that is a place like, you got to take that into your prayer closet in your marriage, ladies. Like, am I fully supporting my husband? Or am I just wanting him to be someone else? And so whenever that shifted in my life, like, a lot of things shifted. Like, our rela- you, you're more open. You're, if you're constantly frustrated with something, you're not open to making better changes. You just want, you want to blame the other person. And, like, I mean, like, a lot of marriages go through that place. And I'm just being honest with you. Because you got to be real and, and let God convict you. If we're not willing to be convicted, we're not going to change. So, yeah. Like Brandy said, it's been uh, 20 fabulous years. Uh, Scoring points. I, no, I mean that. No, no. <laughs> No, I absolutely mean that. But um, I was telling Brandy and I was telling them when we were talking at the house of how many times I go into workplaces and my day-to-day activities and, I, uh, and people are talking about how, you know, the, oh, they, they got a divorce and they did this. And, I, and just in talking, and they, they said, how long have you been married? I said, 20 years. And, and the look on their face is quite amazing and comical at the same time. I just Because it's so foreign in today's society. Um, but as I was looking at over this this morning again, and when I was praying over all these questions and everything, I felt God show me. I, I, he He showed me an odometer, and I saw the odometer, and it had three hundred thousand miles on it. And I started thinking, and He was saying, "What makes a car last so long?" And then I was, and then He was like, "Well, you keep up on the regular maintenance, as you're supposed to, and things will break. But whenever they do break," you want to replace it with quality parts. Uh, so I thought that was absolutely profound and, yeah. and uh, absolutely something I was going to share this morning. But uh, definitely, you know, just the regular maintenance, just effective communication, just staying, in, staying as one and staying in unity. Yeah. Um, that's so important because if you're not in unity, I mean, it's, it's, it's chaos. So, uh, amen. amen. So I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take the last 30 minutes, and because uh, oh, <clears throat> I have the most experience, uh, according to so <laughs> that's for us for the panel exists. But um, we Pam and I have been married for 22 years, um, and uh, it's it's thank God we were saved going in um, because we probably wouldn't have lasted um, more than a year. Or well, she said probably three months, but <laughs> I gave it a year. I'm a little optimistic, I guess. <laughs> but um, and so um, again, I want to bring I want to bring Pam and 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 I did just kind of give you a little. She sent me a, a text with some little emoji with some little hearts. She's like, so evidently she's watching. Yeah. So I was like, all right. So, um, yeah, just want to give a shout out to you, babe. And uh, so, <laughs> but, um, and so I, I, she, I said, okay, what, you know, as we discussed, she said what, what, what really was important for her was, was um, praying for the spouse. And um, now that could be, seem insignificant, or, or like how, how would that, how does that affect your, your love for your spouse? And the more I thought about it, the Lord, you know, reveals that, well, love is a, it's a supernatural or it's a spiritual thing. Um, we understand that as Corinth, from Corinthians that um, it, it lists all these things what love is. It defines love. And we know, so we know that that's not natural. Uh, we, can, we can do some puppy love um, and all those, those types of things, but that, that wears off real, real quick. But so the, the spiritual aspect or the supernatural aspect of it is when we do pray, when we, we pray for our spouse, it, it does a supernatural work inside of us. And, it, it, like I, and she, can, she can say the same thing, and, and you guys as well, but you, you start off thinking love is this, and then over time, love deepens. And, and you, you, you have a, a better understanding of what it is. And, um, and so that's a supernatural work. That's not a natural, that's not a natural thing. Um, 
unless I'm sadly mistaken, but, <laughs> um, but it's, a, it's a supernatural work. And so, um, so just um, let me try to regain my, my, my thought here because the, the emoji messed me up bad. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I've got to check my notes, my handy dandy notebook. Um, so, no, so yeah, back to that. But um, one of the things she said was that repentance and forgiveness is key. Um, yeah, amen. So we, you know, because you're gonna you're gonna have hiccups. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make mistakes, and I am the king of them. Um, I, in every aspect of my life, I learn from failure. Uh, if, if whether it's working with, you know, working on, on, on the job, I will always learn from having a mistake, doing something wrong, falling back and saying, OK, how, how did that happen and how do I fix it? And um, and so unfortunately, that carries on to, to every aspect of my life. And um, and so with that, overcoming the failures and, and all those things, it's repentance and forgiveness. And she brought up a Colossians 3.12. Um, this is what it says. Since God chose you to be holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender, mer- tender heart and mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Verse 13 says, make an allowance for each other's faults and forgiving anyone who offends you. And remember, the Lord forgave you. And here's the takeaway. So you must forgive others. So it's not an option. I mean, it, it's an obligation, right? And so, um, but it's staying, it's staying open to the Lord, keeping your heart open, and allowing God to do that work, you know? Um, and so. Yeah. No, I love, that be- I love that because there's two types of workers that I've worked around. One that continues to make the mistake after they fail, and the one that goes back and says, how can I, how can I change? How can, I, how can I do this the right way? I've worked with both types of people. One that continues to make the mistake after you tell them time and time again, that's not how you do it. Lance is bringing up a key issue here that I believe in parenting we need to, to bring into our understanding as well as in our relationship with our spouse is to say, I need to make it right. How do I do this right? And look, I am the one that sometimes does not go back and evaluate and say, hey, how do I get this right? I, I, I do both. You know, I've, I'm the bad worker. And I'm the good worker, you know, and so I need to uh, evaluate my life and say, hey, God, I'm going to come back, reset and say, God, show me where I made the mistake so that I can change the next time we do it. And sometimes I'm sorry, but for husbands, that takes a little while. Sometimes we're not perfect in that. Um, we do make the mistake over and over again sometimes until we get it right. Um, and, and the same with with our wives. I mean, they're not perfect people. Um, but they get it right more than we do. But it's still the point that they still have to evaluate. Uh, we all have to evaluate our life and say, God, how can I make this right? moving forward so that I can change. And and so she was right in what she said, because we are different people than we are when we started. I was a very, very selfish individual and, and, and just grew up with a mentality. I'm a firstborn, you know, so I have that, that in me just to want what I want when I want it. And it's all mine mentality and, uh, sad that I had siblings because they took all my stuff away from me. You know, that's the firstborn I'm talking about. You know, I, I had to learn the same thing in my marriage and it molded and shaped over over time, you're not going to get it right in the first year. You're not going to get it right in the first 10 years. I'm just being honest with you. It takes time to change and mold two individuals into one. It's a mystery, the word says. I want to bring that up. So it's not an easy task to bring two people together and make them one. It's very difficult and it's a challenge and you got to put forth the work. And so we need to do that as couples, as relationship, as our families. And we need to teach our kids that it's not easy. It's going to be a road that, that's less traveled. Not many people want to travel that road. But, but we have to challenge in, in, in our kids to walk that road because where they're going to get to in the long run is going to be far better than a different path they take. Amen? All right. Well, we, we had another question to go through, but we don't, we're out of time t- today, which we always are because we just like talking. But God knows what he's doing, and he leads us in our, in our conversation. And that's what it was about today. How many of you got something this morning? 
Amen. Amen. I, I pray that even if you didn't, you walk away with something specific, that God brings something back up into your prayer closet when you get there. I, I know that we could, again, we could sit up here. We discussed it uh, Thursday night, actually, to this may need to be something we do at a, a, just a special event on, on an evening uh, sometime during the week at some point where we can spend a little bit more time just discussing, you know, what God has done in our life and, and bring in some other couples as well that have gone through some different things. But uh, this, this is good. It's quality. And I pray that God will continue to pour into your life in every aspect of, of what was spoken this morning. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, we come before you right now. We thank you for this morning. Since we thank you, you for what you just heard. A spirit led message. And I know that it's spoken to your heart. And where do these things stand with you? Where are you at right now with the Lord? Because everything you heard today can only lead you to a place of accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You just heard me say live in the message, everyone bow your head. So I'm speaking to you right now. Have you ever given your heart to the Lord Jesus? And, and maybe you had at some point, but you walked away. But right now, the Spirit of God is speaking to your heart. And you want to give your life to Christ or you want to come back to Him. If either one of those fits you, I want to lead you in a simple prayer. But I'm going to tell you, it's going to take being real with God in your heart. It's going to take you being wide open to Him and truthful and honest with Him. And if you are, the Lord's fixing to do something in your life. If that's you and you really mean it, I want you to repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I realize that I'm a sinner. And I cannot pay for my sin. But you love me so much that you sent your son Jesus and he took my punishment. He paid the price for my sin. I repent of my sin, Lord. Forgive it. Cover it with the blood of Jesus. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And from this day forward, Jesus is Lord of my life. Amen. I want to tell you something. Did you mean that with all of your heart? Because if you did, God just covered all of your sin with the precious blood of His Son. Do you know what that means? That means that God can no longer see you at your worst. He only sees your life at His Son's best. That means you are welcome to come into the presence of the Lord. You don't have to be ashamed because it's paid for. What kind of awesome God is this? And the devil's been trying to convince you that God is mad at you. And the whole time, the truth is, is God is madly in love with you instead. I want to rejoice with you, saints. Here's what you need to do. This isn't the end. It's only the beginning. You need to find a church that teaches the word of God and truth. And you need to get plugged in. You say, well, pastor, what about coronavirus? Let the spirit of the Lord lead you and you follow him. The devil's been leading people to destruction for centuries. Now it's time for the spirit of God to lead you. Get plugged in. Learn more about the word. Search God's word. Asking God's spirit to reveal that word. But do not stop here. It's just the beginning. Amen? God bless you and looking forward to seeing you one day, even if it's in the kingdom of heaven.